Let's go through some advanced player lighting techniques in Photoshop. So we're not gonna do a full composition in this video, but basically I've set up this document. So we have our background, which is some stars and a dark gradient at the bottom. And then I just kind of dropped a cutout on top of everything. Really the first thing to note is just, you want the background and the subject that you're lighting to kind of work in tandem with each other. The background is gonna tell you where the light source is coming from. And then you want that light source to reflect accurately on your subject. So in this case, we have some stars, the brighter part of the stars are on the right side of the image. So that's going to be our light source. And we can even draw more attention to it by making a new layer above our background and going to our brush. You can use the bracket keys to make a big soft brush. I want the hardness to set to zero. We'll basically just brush one click in white on this side. And then we can set this blend mode of the layer to overlay. That's just gonna brighten up this particular spot on the background. So this just makes it more clear that this is our light source. This is what we'll be working with. And so now we want this light source to reflect on our subject. So you basically want the light hitting the right side of these players and then darkness on the left side. And you can see the cutout that we chose is already kind of set up this way. Like you have the light in the initial photo hitting our subject's face on this side, hitting his arm on this side. So it kind of works with how we have the background set. So that's another thing to keep in mind is just when you're selecting your cutouts and the backgrounds, make sure they kind of match initially. So obviously there's a dark background. It's a dark design in general. The cutouts are very bright. So right off the bat, let's just lower the exposure on these player cutouts. Let's go down to our adjustment layers and we'll go to exposure. And I'm gonna clip this exposure layer to our cutout by holding option and clicking in the space between layers. You can also right click and create a clipping mask that way. Create clipping mask. And now we're just gonna bring the exposure down a good bit. So these are gonna be the darkest parts of our cutout. You can mess with the offset and gamma correction if you need to. Might depend on the player image that you're using. And now with the mask of the exposure layer, we're gonna brush back on the parts that we wanna brighten up. So that is the parts on the right side of the players. And when I say right side, I mean the viewer's right side. So let's take our brush. You can hit B for the shortcut, this brush tool. And I'm gonna brush black on our white mask to basically hide this layer of exposure anywhere we don't want the darkness coming in. So where we want the light essentially. So I'm just gonna click on this side of the player to light his face and jersey. And we can zoom in on his hand, his arm. And you'll see in this example, we have two players. One of them is skying the disc over the other. So we might choose to light the bottom player a little less aggressively since he's not really the focus of the action, we definitely want to bring the viewer's attention to the guy that's actually catching the disc. So uh, along those same lines, let's make sure we light his arm and then we can even splash a little bit of light onto the disc just to brighten up that area some. And we can just kind of softly brush the bottom player as well and some of these lower parts, probably this player's knee. And you can also lower the flow if you don't want to brush so aggressively. When you lower the flow, it basically makes it a, a lighter brush. So you can kind of click and click over it to make it more of a brush in certain spots. So you might choose to do that. And we're just kind of going along this side of our player cutout in general. We can also go down and get this player's shoe. And if you ever brush on too much, just hit X to switch between the foreground and background color. White is gonna show the layer, black is gonna hide it. So when we're showing this layer, remember we darkened this exposure. So by showing it, we're actually making it darker. We can basically go with something like this to start. And we can always come back and fine tune the exposure later. So you can already see a quick before and after we darken the left side of the image already makes the player cutouts feel a lot more dynamic. The next thing we're gonna do is throw on a curves layer. So let's go down to our adjustments, go to curves. And again, I'm gonna clip this layer to our player cutout. So it's only affecting our players. And let's switch this blend mode to luminosity 
This is just gonna make it so it's only affecting the lightness and darkness and not affecting the colors. And now when you click and drag on this curves layer, we can make things again, brighter or darker. And I use the curves layer here instead of exposure just cause I think you can fine tune it a little bit more. You have more control over the highlights and shadows of the image. So let's make this a good bit brighter, something like this. And now we're gonna invert this mask to hide the layer. Command I is a shortcut for that. You can also go up to image, adjustments, invert. And now we're just gonna brush in the parts of the player cutout that are already brighter. We're just gonna create contrast essentially from the already bright parts to the already dark parts. So now with a white brush, switching my foreground color to white, I'm gonna also lower the flow to maybe 10% or so. And I'm just gonna color in the white parts. And I'm just brushing over the different areas to add some brightness. And you'll see this is just gonna create contrast and kind of add a little bit more overall pop to our player cutout. And we can fast forward through this part so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so now that we've done the highlights, we're now gonna go in and duplicate this layer. Let's hit Command J, again, clip it. And I'm just gonna delete this layer mask because now we're gonna do the shadows. So let's bring this curves layer down. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but darken the parts that were already dark on the original cutout. Just again, adding more contrast to the places that we wanna accentuate. All right, so now we can check in on our before and after our curves adjustments. You can see it just brings some more detail and kind of makes it this glossier, smoother look on the whole cutout. So that's definitely the most time consuming part, but if you can take the time to really fine tune that detail, it's gonna make your final design come out a lot better. The next thing we can do with lighting is add an inner shadow to the entire cutout. So if you go to your cutout and go down to effects, Let's go to inner shadow. This is actually gonna be an inner glow, but it's just applying to certain parts of the cutout. So if you set this blend mode to overlay, and you can experiment with overlay or screen depending on what cutout you have, but bringing it all the way up just so you can see what it's doing and we can increase the size. But right now the angle is set to 90. I'm gonna change this angle to, you know, something like 40 degrees where we think the light is coming from maybe more like 30. Basically, you can see this without the inner shadow. And with it, we have white hitting the right side of this cutout. And it can really help add to the lighting effect because it's not hitting the left side as opposed to if you used an inner glow, it would just wrap the whole cutout in an even glow. So let's just make this a little bit more subtle. We can decrease the distance and we don't have to go 100 on the overlay maybe like 60% opacity. But you can see before and after, just brings a little bit more brightness and a sort of rim light just to this side of the image. The next thing we're gonna do is deal with colors. I mean, right now I feel like this blue on the lower player cutout is a bit too vibrant. So let's just add a hue and saturation layer on top of the whole thing and option click again to clip this layer. Let's lower the saturation just to make it a bit more muted, make it feel like it fits in this specific background a little bit better. And now if you wanted to, we could get some of this blue from the stars hitting our cutouts as well. Up to you on how much of an effect you wanna create with this color, but again, hue and saturation layer. Let's switch this one to colorize. And I'm gonna change the hue until we get into this blue range, trying to match this color with the color of the stars. And you can mess with the saturation, but it is pretty desaturated. So something like that. And then we can bring the lightness up just a little bit so we can see the color on the darker parts. So maybe just something like this. And let's hide this mask, Command I to invert it. And now again, we can paint back on just softly kind of on the edges, any parts where we want that blue coming through. So can see it's gonna be a pretty subtle effect. We can bring our flow up so we can see it a bit better. But something soft like this, maybe we get it on the lower player's arms as well. 
main guy's leg, all of that seems like too much. Because, I mean, it's mostly a dark background. Like, it's not like a straight up blue light shining. It's just maybe you get some blue glow. So, based on your background, you might be more or less subtle with this. Maybe a little bit more on his arm at the top. So, something like that. So, if you want to see a quick before and after, we started with our initial cutout without any inner shadow, and we added our exposure curves of highlights, curves of shadows, then our hue and saturation layers at the end in addition to that inner shadow, and of course, our light source at the right side of the background, and we get this. So, again, before and after. Now, of course, if this was a full composition, I would definitely recommend adding some finishing effects over the top of everything, bringing this design into Camera Raw Filter, adding some color overlays, textures, anything like that will help blend the subject into the background a little bit better, make it feel like a more cohesive design. But for this video, I just wanted to focus on these advanced lighting techniques, so let me know if you have any questions on those.